stay on the street forever. <laughs> So, so she's laying there, and I'm like, how do you feel? And she's like, I, and she was kind of hysterical, and she's like, I don't, I don't feel great. And, and, and she was like, like kind of hyperventilating. She's like a little bit panicky. And so uh, I was like, you know what? Uh, you just need to breathe. Like, take some deep breaths. Just breathe. And I'm, I'm kneeling, and you know, kneeling at her, and like, just breathe, just breathe. And she wasn't listening to me, and I was like, like this. <laughs> and, and, like practicing the, the breathing with her, and, and she's like not really listening, and like I felt pretty relaxed. <laughs> it would have been a lot better if she had stopped crying. <laughs> but so it, eventually she she started she started doing the breathing exercises with me, and I, it felt like I was not helping a crash victim, but that I was about to deliver a baby on the street. <laughs> And I so, like, suddenly became very grateful that that's not what was happening. <laughs> because the last time I had seen somebody give birth to a baby was when I was in 10th grade health class and they made us watch that movie, The Miracle of Life. <laughs> which is aptly named because it is a miracle if you still feel alive after watching it. <laughs> and I was like kind of interested in it at first because for the first half of it I thought it was just like a really bad sci-fi movie about aliens. <laughs> and then the camera panned out and I saw a baby ripping through a screaming woman's body and I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> And then I couldn't sleep or eat cheesy pasta for three months. <laughs> I actually did see, um, in real life, I saw a woman give birth. It was the next summer, I saw a woman give birth to a, a child. This is a funny <laughs> I saw a woman give birth to a child at the Salt Lake City Library. <laughs> And I'm not making fun of her, but it was it was like a really tr uh, horrific thing to see. And I was I was she was uh, on the floor like kind of below me, and I was sitting in this chair where I had like a direct view of what was happening. And I didn't want to move because it was sometimes really hard to get a good seat at that light. <laughs> <laughs> I, kept, I kept thinking uh, like uh, how she should name her kid Libby after library. <laughs> And I thought, how poetic would be if that kid grew up to be a librarian? <laughs> uh, well, where was I? Baby, car, car accident. So, it was a car accident. Uh, and anyway, I was like kneeling down at this woman thinking about how it felt like I was about to deliver a child. And I was like, well, it could be worse. You could be giving birth in the Salt Lake City Library. And she was like, huh? And I was like, I was just disoriented. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so um, she was she was kind of like she was mumbling a lot, and I think she was kind of shocked a little bit. She was understandably so, and mumbling a little bit, and um, and whispering. She just kept saying, "I'm so I, it, it, my leg hurts, my arm hurts. I'm so scared. Can I get off the road? Can I get up now?" And and I was like, "Stay here, or will you be able to walk?" <laughs> And, um, and, and also, now the woman who had called 911 was calling everybody else she knew to tell them what had happened. And, and, like, giving the same dramatic account, and I was like, I really hope that this woman and I do not have mutual friends because she is already telling the story better without practice than I will later. <laughs> and then I saw she was wearing leopard print pants and like really tall, high heel shoes, and I was like, we don't have any mutual friends. <laughs> So uh, the, the woman, is, the, the crash victim, was like like saying things to me, and I was leaning down like pretty close to her face because I like being intimate, and, and I was like, hear her very well. And um, and suddenly she coughed and like choked a little bit, and then she coughed all like a, three pints of blood into my face. I like was like poosh, it was like a slasher film, and um, and I was just like. It was like this like shocking moment. I like I like went into shock at this point. I'm like, oh my gosh, like somebody just coughed a lot of blood on me. And um, I was like so uh, concerned about the fact that this woman was now coughing up blood that I didn't immediately run down the street scraping my face against every jagged surface I could find and ran for the good Lord to take me home. Um, I was like, uh, I, I you know, based on TV, I don't think it's good when people are coughing up blood. And so I was like, uh, I don't know what to do. And, and now there were like a few people standing around and everybody was just like, uh, this woman is now coughing up blood. We're all a little bit horrified by what's happening. She looks like the Bellagio fountain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Which if there was music, it would have been pretty. <laughs> if they coordinated with the notes, are like, 
when it's like really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Is that okay? Too much. Um, and so she, uh, 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 anyway, she was she was coughing up blood, just kind of like turning and spitting it out, and that was making her even more nervous. And then she said, "Can somebody please call my husband?" And suddenly, all of these spectators who were standing around, who had nothing going on at the moment, began making themselves look really busy. Because who wants to make that phone call uh, to some stranger? And then, like, all eyes eventually rested on the man who had caused the accident in the first place. Like, if somebody has to call her husband, it's going to be you. And he had, he had kind of calmed down by this point. He was like, oh, I, uh, I, guess, I guess I could do it. I could make the call. And so um, he's like, you know, what's, what's the number? And so she sort of repeated the number. And so the man called, called his phone number. And it was the most awkward phone call I think that has ever been placed, ever. And uh, he like picked up the phone. And as this phone as this phone call was happening, like everybody sort of like started mumbling and like talking to each other to try and like drown out the sound and like pretend like they weren't listening because it was so uncomfortable. And he's like, it start it starts ringing and he's like, okay, and he's like. Wait, 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 what's your husband's name? What's your, I don't know what your husband, what's your name? And then, and then, he's, and then the husband answered and he's like, uh, hello there. Uh, you are a man. I think you know uh, that you have a wife or a girlfriend. I think it's a wife. I think she's a husband. Okay, you're married. Um, so that woman that you're married to, uh, what, what's her name? Uh, Emily? Yeah. Okay, uh, Emily. Well, I'm calling to let you know that Emily was very unfortunately hit by a car today. And and then and then everybody's kind of like, uh, really? She was hit by a car. Is that what happened? And, and then, the, 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 like, kind of staring at him, he kind of looks around at everybody. And he's like, actually, it was me. I was the one. <laughs> hit her with my car, and uh, she's totally fine, everything's fine, um, but I just wanted to let you know, she was hit by this car, and um, she, is, no, you can't talk to her right now, she's in the street, <laughs> but she's fine, <laughs> it's actually kind of funny, when you get here, you'll see, <laughs> And so he hangs up the phone, and you know we're all like, uh, like and now I felt like that man was the victim uh, at this point. Um, we all kind of felt really bad for him, and uh, and so um, I'm still I'm still kneeling in front of this woman. I now had her blood on me, and um, and I kept thinking like this is this is like getting really bad. Like if, if, if she's coughing up blood, like this is you know bad things can happen if people are coughing up blood, and so. Um, I, uh, she, she told me that her mouth really hurt, the inside of her mouth really hurt. And I was like, uh, you know, why don't you open your mouth and I'll look in it. So she like, opened her mouth really wide. And I like, was like prying into her mouth and um, like got like her blood on my hands. And I was like, oh my gosh, if anything happens to this woman, her blood is literally on my hands. <laughs> and she's, she's still coughing up blood. And I'm like, uh, the exorcist called, wants its possessed girl back. <laughs> Um, and I looked in her mouth, and I saw that she had bitten her cheek, uh, like really, really badly, like really bitten her cheek. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, you bit your cheek! This is great news!" And she, she looked at me like I wasn't sure what the desired outcome was supposed to be in the situation. And I was like, "No, like I, I think all of the blood is just coming from inside your mouth. You're not coughing it up from your internal organs, which I am pretty sure is worse." <laughs> and um, and she's like, "Oh, okay." Well, that's good, and I was like, and you know, looking at her, it seemed like she was actually fine. She just had bit her cheek and was maybe scratched up a little bit. And so, um, we were, you know, there was great rejoicing in all of the land. <laughs> like, really happy about that. And and then finally, uh, right about this time, the ambulance and like 11 news stations shut up because we're in Salt Lake City where like nothing happens, and so. <laughs> Somebody like gets hit by a car. All the news stations show up, and um, if you in Utah, you can like find good apples at the store, and it's newsworthy. <laughs> or like I don't know, walk your dog newsworthy. Explosive diarrhea at the Burger King featured story. <laughs> so the news they, they all show up every the news station and uh, news stations and the uh, and the ambulance and there's and there's always a fire truck. 
what does the fire truck do in these situations? There's never a fire, uh, but they always bring the fire truck, and uh, and then and they like kind of like push me out, and I was like, you're welcome for keeping her alive for the last ten minutes. <laughs> and then and then I, I just sort of left because like there's nothing really for me to do here, and I went I went home to my uncle's house, and I walked in, and I had forgotten that I had blood on me, and I walked in, and he's like, what happened to you? And I got like blood on my mouth. Like, like, <laughs> I make that face regularly, and, uh, and and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this crazy thing happened, and he had the news on in the background, and sure enough, the the news starts reporting that about this little, this uh, little accident occurred downtown. I was like, that woman was just bleeding on me. And he's like, I don't know how these things happen. To you. And so I, you know, I like watched the news story, and the police person came on, and he said. Uh, looks like everything's going to be fine, but everybody needs to be careful when you're pulling out of parking garages. Um, like, I don't know what you're going to do. You can't see the sidewalk and do the pull out. But anyway, he said, everybody needs to be careful when you pull out of parking garages because you never know if there's somebody coming by. And then the news story ended and it went on to the featured story about uh, explosive diarrhea. <laughs> Thank you.